Welcome to the show. This is the C.S. Joseph podcast. I'm your host, C.S. Joseph. And today's question is, how can the deadly sin of greed help ENTJs and ISFPs reach the cognitive origin of purpose, right? Which is their cognitive origin. Purpose is the one thing that ENTJs and ISFPs want the most out of life. And according to their temper will, we have the deadly sin of greed and the living virtue of uh, generosity, for example, and that's also uh, alongside the shadow pole and the aspiration pole uh, on the Temple Wheel. If you want to learn more about Temple Wheels, I highly recommend John Bodine's article about the Temple Wheels as presented on our blog. The blog is found at csjoseph.life. Check that out. John Bodine is absolutely brilliant. He's like the uh, Plato of our community. And it's awesome that he has definitely uh, become a pioneer in the science, a very technical pioneer, and taken everything to the next level uh, within the context of uh, everything that we're trying to accomplish for the ego hacker community. Now, deadly sin of greed. Why is it important? Well, let's, let's first look at the cognitive origin of purpose and what the cognitive origin of purpose actually really means and why it is so important. Purpose is kind of like uh, a legacy of achievement because the body temple, which is what this temple dyad uh, for purpose uh, is for, ENTJs and ISFPs is part of that temple dyad. And the body temple is all about legacy. It's all about getting to a point where you are working really hard and you have something to leave behind, basically. You want to be memorable and remembered for something. You know, not unlike... Uh, like for example, um, there is a, uh, let's see. Like for example, Ray Kroc, right? He's an ENTJ and his legacy is the Kroc Center. And he's, he's the guy that really helped develop McDonald's and get McDonald's to where it is today, right? He's an ENTJ. Or there's John Ferner, he's an ENTJ and his legacy is becoming Walmart basically. You know, Walmart Pay, for example, uh, Walmart Plus, that came as a result of <laughs> that came as a direct result of uh, Ray Kroc and, and what he did, uh, you know, uh, you know, for McDonald's or, or, uh, to, or uh, John Ferner, excuse me, what he did as CEO of Walmart, right? Or, uh, but then there's some negative legacy as well, like John Scully, who's an ENTJ who completely screwed over Apple and fired Steve Jobs. So, you know, and now he's remembered as the guy who screwed that up, you know. Uh, I'm sure that's not exactly the purpose that he chose for but literally purpose is a legacy of achievement. It's all about achieving something, something memorable, something that's going to last generation after generation, something that is so meaningful that you'll be remembered for it indefinitely, right? Another example is Ray Dalio. He's a very powerful ENTJ. He wrote uh, the book Principles, which I highly recommend. If you are a greed type, which is ENTJ and ISFP, please read Principles by Ray Dalio. I highly, highly recommend that book. Uh, for you folks. You'll get really trained and help augment your, uh, your purpose as a result. It, it's, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely an incredible book. And he talks about you know, systems and things that he's been able to achieve as a result of implementing systems because he has found his purpose. Hell, he even actually uses Myers-Briggs type indicator to actually help understand members of his team. You know, one day I hope that uh, Ray Dalio will actually become my customer in using uh, Jungian analytical psychology and foresight dynamics to further understand his team members to definitely augment and optimize all of their potential for the highest level of productivity so that he can have even a better legacy of success, a better legacy of achievement in the near future uh, for his team and any other ENTJ out there that does it as well. But legacy of achievement, it's all about achievements. And the more that uh, ENTJs and ISFPs achieve in their life, the more they feel closer to their cognitive origin of purpose because their purpose ultimately is the achievement itself. This is why the God function of extroverted thinking is attached to achievement. It's all about achievement, levels of achievement. That's why members of the body temple, INTPs, ESFJs, ENTJs, and ISFPs all care so much about achieving. 
The thing is, is that you have the ESFJs and the INTPs who are going out of their way to explore and discover and their purpose, ultimately, you know, through their shadow uh, temple wheel, which uh, is as a result of things that they discovered. They are going to be remembered for those discoveries, not unlike Elon Musk, who is an INTP, who is hell-bent on discovering Mars and what's on Mars and being all about Mars, for example. Maybe he wants to be a Martian. I don't know. But what he's doing with SpaceX, that's ultimately his legacy that he's leaving behind. That's what he is achieving, right? Because it is discovery-led. Whereas the other way around for ENTJs and ISFPs, it's purpose-led, right? And their achievements ultimately is where they draw their sense of purpose. And that's the thing, like, you know, you look at the virtue and vice of ISFPs where their vice is idleness. And, if, and their idleness comes from lacking purpose in their life, lacking the freedom to achieve ultimately. And this is what ENTJs do on a consistent basis. This is what ISFPs actually need. Because if these folks do not have personal freedom to keep achieving, then they're going to feel like they have no purpose at all. So where does the uh, deadly sin of greed come into this? Why are ISFPs and ENTJs so greedy? Well, they're greedy for opportunities. They're greedy for resources and material. They're even greedy for various people. I've had ISFPs and ENTJs literally steal members of my own team, members of my staff that I developed, that I trained, that I built. I, like, I take these people off the street, I turn them into an amazing, productive, uh, very, you know, taking their brilliance, taking their natural talent, and turning them into absolutely productive team members. And then these ENTJs and ISFPs come into my life and then they greedily steal my staff members from me, for example, to put them into their organization so that they can achieve more. And that's really why they use greed. Greed is to amass resources and people, human resources, uh, money, uh, achievements, basically, because they know the more money they have, they know the more capable people they have, that means they can achieve even more. That means they can reach their purpose faster, right? And that's why they are so greedy. That's why they're willing to take from other people because, and take for themselves because they're trying to utilize those resources to reach higher levels of achievement, higher levels of purpose, and, and to finally reach that purpose so that they can have that legacy of achievement so that they can be memorable in their lives. That is the entire point. That is why they are so greedy. That is exactly how greed itself is utilized in order to reach that cognitive origin of purpose. Now, greed is not necessarily a bad thing. Now, see, a lot of people think that, you know, just because it's a deadly sin that it's automatically bad. Not necessarily the case. Some people assume the same thing with living virtues, that, oh, it's automatically good because it's a living virtue. And that's, no, that's not the case because, you know, greed out of control is bad. You know, uh, your living virtue of generosity can be bad. What happens when you give too much? What happens when you give to the wrong people? What happens when you're generous to the wrong person? It's like giving a man a fish versus teaching a man a fish. If you're just gonna keep giving a man a fish, he's going to become dependent on you. Is that really a strong legacy, right? So generosity can also you know, backfire as well, as much as obviously greed can, because the more greedy you are, the more people will not wanna have relationships with you. And then you can end up ruining your great relationships that you have with other people because you took from them. You literally stole their resources from them, greedily, right? And they don't have to deal with you at all. And that can create alienation. So greed can be bad in that context. But then greed can be good because in some cases is that like you can satisfy other people's greed and then that actually could, act, you could utilize greed where it's like, hey, you know, this is what you're getting out of the situation. This is what I'm getting out of the situation. And it's like a trade, right? That's ultimately the spirit of commerce itself, right? That's the spirit of achievement itself. Mutual benefit. You can actually use your greed in such a way where you are promoting the mutual benefit of other fellow human beings, maybe even potential fellow entrepreneurs where you can partner up with people as a result. I'm actually meeting with a, uh, with a greed type uh, later today, actually, an ISFP gentleman, where I'm going to be you know, sharing some of my resources with him to help improve his business and take his business to the next level, right? And I'm doing this for him because I care about him, because he's given so much to me, because he's been very, very generous to me, right? 
and I would like to give back to him because of how generous he has been to me because I don't want to be that guy living life who just keeps taking and taking and taking without giving to him. And I want to continue to give to him because I care about him that much because of how generous he has been to me, right? The thing is, is that I'm going to show him how, you know, in some cases, you know, his deadly sin of greed is necessary. His deadly sin of greed is actually very helpful. But that's the thing about him is that he thinks that greed is bad. And I'm trying to show him there's actually some good aspects to that greed for himself because of how generous he is. Sometimes he needs to be generous towards himself and not just generous to other people. And one of the ways of doing that is helping him develop his deadly sin of greed so that, you know, he's actually gaining a lot more benefit. That way he's charging a proper rate. That way he's getting, uh, you know, more value for his time, basically, right? Because that's all it is, proper exchange of value. He's one of the most generous men I've ever met in my life. And I love that about him. But the thing is, is at the same time, you know, sometimes he can be too generous, right? And so I'm gonna come in and be like, hey, you know, let's look at your systems, let's improve it. Let's, uh, let's look at your procedures, your standard operating procedures. Let's get you, you know, some staff members. Let's get you some proper marketing system going up. That way you're gonna be charging a proper rate. That way, uh, that way you're gonna have higher quality clients that you wanna work with. And that way you're attracting a much better crowd and then you're able to achieve more and have a much more memorable legacy. Because he knows what his purpose is. The thing is, is that he struggles with the execution because he doesn't want to lean into his deadly sin of greed. And I'm going to show him how it actually can be a very good thing. So greed is actually necessary. It's actually necessary to achieve their cognitive origin of purpose. It really absolutely is. It's just the thing is, is that greed goes wrong with these types when they are the only ones that benefit as a result of their greed. When they are being greedy and greedy for others on behalf of other people in their life, where they're able to satisfy potentially the greed of multiple people in their life together as a cohesive unit, as a cohesive team, then that helps them reach their purpose as well. That helps everybody achieve more, basically. And that's how they can use their cognitive origin of purpose to lead in the area of purpose and bring purpose to other people's lives and, and as well as elevate other people's purpose in as much as their purpose is also being elevated at the same exact time. That's what the value is in this particular situation and in this particular instance. So anyway, folks, uh, Thanks for watching and listening, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode.